Hey folks, I'm here with the Dan Kosh and Annie. What are we doing today? Well, you know, I was up here in Boston. Today's the Yankee Red Sox games, the weekend. It's the end of the baseball season. And we were doing something in some things in Ali's office. And we were just talking. And one of the great things, Ali, I think about the scouts is how amazing they are about staying centered right. in the canal. So that's great, Annie. It was your suggestion. So we just tested out a little bit of a curvature and see what happens. We have an extracted molar here. For you, and I'm gonna basically try to demonstrate this on. Um, so here's our molar, and as you can see, it's got some kind of a funky-looking uh, roots. Looks like a little tripod, and he is gonna. It's, it's a totally funky, nice, funky distal like kind of and that, out that of, is a clinical term. By I way. can actually, ex, you know, imagine it wouldn't have been so fun to extract this too. Just pulling it out acts like it's a nicely anchored too. So I got, as usual, the, um, um, the setup with the um, endo ring, and this is the basic uh, setup for the um, uh, endo sequence blend protocol. Got the orifice opener and the 30. So let's just go into this distal buckle that has got that weird distal type of a, um, inclination. We're gonna put that on the endo sink and turn the unit on, set it up an OTR of 0.6, 500 RPM, and here we got the distal canal, so just basically taking three tiny bites out of it. And ultimately what we're trying to see is just the curvature. We're not really trying to... Um, and you know, one of the things, Ali, that people have to understand is that with the scouts, there's a very small, little tiny radial land. And what's the benefit of that? What the radial lands do is they essentially are helping center the file. So they give the um, practitioner a little bit of control over the tip. So Annie, let's try to take this um, uh, 25 Scout, mm -hmm. which has that modified landed design, and actually get past the end of the root on this tooth, okay? Yep. And see what happens with it once it's out the apex. We can see the apex is right here with the curvature, right? So we're just going to go basically, this is a 25. So we're going to go and this is right past the apex already. So I don't know if you can see that or not. Yep, absolutely. So with a curvature like this, I'm already past and we've been instrumenting. And I want you to look at the angle of the top of the tooth where I am going straight and the angle here at the apex. Okay, so look at that, I'm three millimeters long and the instrument is staying centered, Annie. That is the amazing part. And, you and know, actually show it to you at a higher magnification. And what I'd like you to do, Ali, is I know, I know you're long out past the apex, but push a little bit more on it to extend it a little bit further along, just as a demonstration purpose, not as a recommended technique, uh, so we can see how the land keeps this instrument beautifully centered. Look, we're rotating here. Nice. Look at this. this. Look at that. I mean, normally an Fabulous. instrument would be zipping the apex being three millimeters long, Annie. Yeah. And, and look at that perfectly round mm -hmm. um, preparation and how this instrument is staying centered despite it. this hook Absolutely. right at the apex. And the other thing that's really great is if somebody is using a non-cutting tip instrument rotationally, if they accidentally go long, that's not recommended, but it's very easy to fit a cone to. All right, and yeah. so you can get a good feel. But if you're using a cutting tip, when you pull that back up the canal, it creates an elliptical tear at the apex. It sure does. That is really actually remarkable. So because this is what we have. We have a uh, canal that is on a straight side, basically it is like this, and then it's taking a curvature and it's exiting like that, right? right. So it's the instrument inside this tooth is taking a nice bend and look at how Right it's here, fabulous. this this is like three millimeters long, mm -hmm. and the instrument is staying centered. Look, after all of this instrumentation for almost a you know yeah few minutes here, we've been going at this thing Absolutely. on this around this curvature. The the there's a zero zipping. That is actually incredible. It's really wonderful. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. Great stuff. Now. It's not recommended really to have a patency out by three millimeters anyway. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a recommended technique, but this is a demonstration to show about the design of the instrument, 
as well as the metallurgy and why we think the blend is just a fabulous way to do a root canal. Now, Annie, if it was an austenitic file with this long of a curve and we were staying here, you would what have would much have more of a chance of a deflection and would go to the side and wouldn't be perfectly centered like that. Even with big lands, it's a challenge for a non heat treated file. Even with the uh, cyclic fatigue, we would have probably ended up uh, with a possible separation of the no, instrument. No question about it. So, again, it goes back to talking about the straight portion of the canal. Well, why use a heat treated file? Because these there's instruments no, no are not very to. efficient in cutting, no. but they give you that control and flexibility that you need at the apex. Exactly. You know, when heat treated first came out, they were thinking about it's going to help you get into the canal. Getting into the canal is an access problem, but where heat treated instrumentation and heat treated metallurgy really plays a role is in that apical four or five millimeters, especially with gnarly curvatures. This was certainly an eye opening experience. I hadn't done this the first time I'm actually doing it for your recommendation and suggestion <laughs> so to you try it out. A, you owe me a Hendrix and Tonic <laughs> with <go>. two limes. <laughs> we'll do that. But uh, that, that's great. I mean, yeah, at least good. it's good to know that we uh, that's a great tool for these scouts, are great for the apical area of the root, the apical third, to have this kind of control and stay centered and clean out. No question about it. Awesome. Great demonstration. Hendrix and Tonic. This Absolutely. <laughs> All right. For Rewild Endo, I'm Ali Nisse. And I'm Ann Koch. And let's save some teeth. Absolutely.